He has come a long way to fight for prime real estate. A perch like this one is worth the struggle. Seek out the perfect mate. But how do these birds know which is male and which is female? Because to me, they all look the same. And dig a burrow up to two meters deep. They use their sharp beaks to loosen the soil and their tiny little feet to push the soil out of the burrow. It's all part of being a blue-tailed bee-eater parent. But is this desolate looking place so far away from their wintering grounds really the right choice for these beautiful birds? I have been waiting eagerly for weeks for them to arrive. Their migration likely started in Sri Lanka. That's about 3500 kilometers away. Their destination is on the fringes of Islamabad. Yes, it is true. These blue-tailed beaters have come all the way to this abandoned brickyard from somewhere in southern India or Sri Lanka. But why on earth would they come to a place like this to raise their young? Well, the answer lies in what a bee eater considers to be a good neighborhood. Now these blue-tailed bee eaters need something they can get their beak into for nesting, which would be this soil cliff that has been exposed by the brickyard. Traditionally, Bee eaters excavate their burrows in softer soil in cliffs and banks that occur naturally along riverbanks. It's not all good news, since this cliff will likely be made into bricks one day. But here and now, these bee eaters are benefiting from this place. One advantage to this man-made nesting site is that even if the rains come early and hard, these nests are safe from the flooding that destroys so many along riverbeds. As the soil was removed for bricks, quite a lot of roots have been exposed. This vegetation provides the ideal elevated perches bee eaters love to use. And the brickyard happens to be next to quite a bit of open landscape filled with insects. The perfect buffet for our bee eaters. That is pretty much what blue-tailed bee eaters like this one dream about. When it comes to the right neighborhood for raising their young. And like us, bee eaters have opted for a colonial approach to living. Well, now that they are all here, it is time for them to start choosing a mate. But how do these birds know which is male and which is female? Because to me, they all look the same. That is because these birds are not what is called sexually dimorphic to the human eye. To the bird eye, they are. Sitting out here in the sun, I have to rely on the old-fashioned observation of behavior to tell the difference between a male and a female. There is one male that I found very interesting and I think it is going to be the one that I'll be following throughout the breeding season. To follow the story of this guy, I need to become less conspicuous. One thing is clear, before he pairs off, he has to square off. You simply cannot just appear and land on a perch in a bee-eater territory. He needs to win this perch. The competition is fierce.
it's well over 38 degrees here in this hide to be honest it's more of a sauna than a hide and but nevertheless it is a it's a good vantage point to watch this male beater going about its business a perch like this one is worth the struggle. It has a clear view of the nesting site, which is important because colonial living is fraught with intruding neighbors. Neighbors who might want to steal your nest. In fact, there are some bee eaters who would also lay eggs in another bee eater's nest. a uh, behavior known as brute parasitism. A male bee-eater can never be too careful. Occupying the right perch is sort of like driving the right Porsche. Without it, this male will never be able to impress a female. Yeah, it's there in the bird world too. The beak of a beater not just empowers it to win the right perch, it also digs with it, hunts with it, sings with it, and also keep that bright plumage top notch. But there is always an itch that requires an extra effort. are agile aerial hunters. Some species can spot prey up to 100 meters away. When a bird spots an insect within range, the perch is vacated in the blink of an eye. Before you know it, Bee-eater and prey are united back on the same perch. Now that he has won a perch, he needs to prove that he's a good hunter too. It takes the right nuptial gift to adequately impress a female. Now this female bee-eater. Now she needs to be won over properly. Our blue-tailed guy has a dragonfly in his beak on offer. <laughs> his, his excitement is really something to watch now. When the female approaches him, the wiggling of the tail and the calls and everything, everything gets exaggerated. Size is a factor when it comes to nuptial gifts. Males will often devour smaller prey they catch and save the larger catch for the females. It doesn't always work out right away though. It looks like he isn't too sure about this potential partner. Here she isn't too sure about him. She has moved on. The dragonfly is certainly impressive, but perhaps she sees something we cannot. He has tried several times with no result. Nothing to do but have a lunch break. Chasing off intruders at the dinner table is part of the job. 
there are a variety of prey items available. He can try them all for the right flavor. Perhaps she prefers butterflies, not this one. What about a white one? You cannot go wrong with a bee. Eventually he finds the right mix of song, dance and prey items. She accepts his suit. They will stay together throughout the breeding season. Nuptial gifts are part of a continued pair bonding. And he will likely continue to feed her with the best catches throughout their bond. Now that the pairs have bonded, some serious digging is next on the agenda. They'll basically dig a horizontal burrow in this vertical wall. But before starting the long and tedious process of excavation, they need to agree on a suitable location for a burrow. Our guy seems to have convinced his partner on a site and has already started the digging process. They use their sharp beaks to loosen the soil and their tiny little feet to push the soil out of the burrow. The excavation will go on for up to 20 days. labor takes its toll on the birds and the peaks might be worn down some when they are done building. But that's one of the challenges. Somebody is interested in our guy's nest. A clever bank mana wants a half built home for free. By expanding the entry of the nest, this mana will make the nest useless for our bee eater. Time is running out for the bee eater. Make sure that the owners are not around. Dead. That mana would have set this couple back weeks. Bank manas weigh up to two times more than blue-tailed beaters, but ferocity wins the day. Despite all this hardship, a bee eater will rarely, if ever, reuse its nest. Here are all the nests from the previous year, and some of them have been renovated by the opportunistic mana for their own use. The bee eater, on the other hand, will return each year to exactly the same location to excavate a new nest. Right now, the bee eaters are digging nests. Some are early in the race and have even made it and will lay eggs soon. Others, like our bee eater, has made modest progress. If all goes well for our blue-tailed guy, 
Once he and his better half completes the digging, she will lay several eggs. The eggs will be incubated for another 20 days. And this event will be hidden from our eyes in the deep dark back end of the nest. Well, I have been away the last few weeks to allow these birds a chance to brood, for the eggs to hatch and the chicks to develop. And straight away you can tell that a lot of eating has been going on. As we know that bee eaters eat insects and these blue-tailed bee eaters eat almost as many dragonflies as they do wasps and bees. They devour their prey whole which means that all the hard and indigestible matter is also ingested in each meal. But what cannot go down must come back up and that is exactly what happens to the exoskeleton of dragonflies, wasps and bees and other indigestible matter. Bee eaters on occasion produce pellets to clear their system. This is fascinating. Right here in front of us, we have a cycle of life. A bee eater generated this pellet from the insects it ate. And ants and other insects are devouring the pellet. Now just look at this. Isn't it just wonderful? This is a blue-tailed bee eater's pellet. You can still tell that it contains a lot of insect body parts. This is probably the wing of a dragonfly. It's hard to tell because it's severely distorted. And here we also have mm, wings of a bee. Where is it? Just saw it. Here. Look at this. These are still. Intact. This is simply fascinating. Well, hello, old friend. Looks like raising a family has been hard. Now that he is here with food in his beak, this means that the nest is active, but I'm really curious to find out what's in it. Well, I've come after 40 days and by this time the chicks should be grown enough to walk to the edge of the nest. And that's the only time you'd be able to see these chicks when they're still in the nest. One call from the parent draws the chick out to the edge of the nest. It looks almost like its parent. He is ready to fledge. Well, according to the parents he is. He thinks otherwise. It is time for some tough love. That delicious dragonfly. Unbelievable. Most of the visits from the parents don't involve food anymore. They wanted to take that leap of faith. But that's not happening today. Once fledged, the juveniles will remain dependent on the parent until they are weaned and have learned to hunt for themselves. And then sometime in early fall, they'll begin their journey down south 
to their wintering grounds. These blue-tailed beaters have definitely put me under their spell. The bright colors, the courtship antics and the acrobatic fights are something I'll deeply miss till the next year. Now, bee eaters have been classified as least concerned by the IUCN because their population is stable. But threats are real and ever increasing in today's world. Their natural habitats such as riverbeds and soft soil cliffs are dwindling as we humans continue to urbanize the planet. Some beekeepers will intentionally plug the nesting cavities because they fear these birds will damage their bee population. A greater threat is the long-term availability of food. The world's insect population is in decline. Some areas have seen a 70 to 90% decrease in the biomass of the insect world. If you are entirely dependent on insects to survive, this is bad news. This brickyard is providing a temporary home for these birds, but for how long they'll be able to raise their young here, we don't know. What I know is that when I come here next time, I want to see an old friend of mine.